All right, y'all, what's going on? It's Combo Breaker 99. I'm back with another quick post-fight analysis video. All right, y'all, Angela Hill. Angela Hill, 30-27's Emily Ducote. Man, this is another one of those fights I was kind of jumping around with. I was back and forth on this one. You know, first I said Angela Hill, then I said, you know what? I think Emily Ducote's got it. Then I was like, oh, no, Angela Hill's going to win this fight. You know, for one, Angela Hill is a fighter on this level that's kind of found her niche. You know, she's kind of found her niche as this lower-level gatekeeper. You know, I think she knows the ins and outs of of the type of styles and skills, the skill sets of fighters on this level. And she's making some nice improvements. So I got to say, shout out to Angela Hill, man. She has been improving, you know, to a certain level where she's at now. And she can hold her own and fight a steady career at this um, at this level where she's at. Eventually, I know she's going to want to try to fight a top top 10 or a top five again. But we'll talk about that here in a minute. I mean, last night, Angela Hill, she was able to 30-27 Emily Ducote in pretty easy fashion. And the thing is, like, even when I went back to pick Angela Hill in this fight, I didn't know it was going to be this easy. You know, I didn't even know it was going to be this easy. I thought eventually, like, Emily Ducote was going to switch a gear and maybe, like, take Angela Hill down to win at least one round. Or I thought she might buzz Angela Hill like Lupe Godinez did, you know, and, like, even at least Amanda Lemos did. Like, they had moments where... They use their timing and they caught Angela Hill. Because like I said, Angela Hill is quick and awkward, but she's still hittable. You know, she's still hittable in there. You can you can catch her with some good shots if you use your timing. But Emily Ducote in this fight, man, her timing was like off. It was like non-existent, you know. Like she was not letting go of any of the offense that we've seen in her uh, UFC debut, like against Jessica Panay. Granted, those are two different styles. But again, Angela Hill is there to be hit. Like I didn't see any speed, speedy, quick moments from... Um, Emily Ducote, you know, even with the leg kicks, like she wasn't landing any leg kicks. Uh, it, eventually, like down the stretch in the fight, she started going to the body more, but she never really set up it, even like a good jab to the body in this fight. Um, as soon as Angela Hill got into motion in the first round, it was like Emily Ducote was, you know, shut that shutting down. Like she just kept buffering in there. Like it was just like she was stuck in buffer mode while Angela Hill was just, you know, working. Angela Hill was just like, okay, I'm hit her here. Let me hit you here. Let me hit you there. Oh. This spot, this spot hasn't been hit yet. Okay, I'm going to tap you here. You know what I mean? Like, a Angela Hill was just coming from all angles in this fight. And um, sometimes I like to think that maybe a trainer or two or the fighter, period, like Angela Hill, heard some of my videos. Because, like, last year, I think it was, like, last summer, I did a video on Angela Hill. And I said, you know what? Angela Hill, you got to change your style. I said, Angela Hill, you got to change your style. You cannot just fight on the outside like this and, you know, fight and pick your shots here and there and then just let the round uh, go by, you know, you got to be more aggressive. You got to be more of a point fighter like Chikagin, like, or, or knockout artists. Like if you're not going to, you know, stop fighters, then you got to throw a lot of volume. Or if you're not going to throw a lot of volume, you're going to have to start submitting people or knock them out. Right. So it seems like she's using her style that she's made for, uh, you know, she's using the jab and when she's letting them straight punches go now, you know, she's getting the success that she needs, you know what I mean? Because the minute somebody like Angel Hill uses a long straight jab against these shorter fighters, you know, um, things should start falling into place for her. Things will fall into place. And Emily Ducote, with the lack of head movement and fighting in a mid range against somebody with a long jab just spells tattoo night, you know, just spells a tattoo. And that's what Angel Hill did in this fight. Never really came in any moments of knocking Emily Ducote out, but she just really outclassed in this fight. I was I was impressed and surprised, man. Um, I mean, the first round, Hill's movement and pressure already looked to be an issue as soon as she started sticking that jab out and just mixing her attack up right there in the first minute. You know, Emily Ducote wasn't able to let it go to the body or the calf. Like I said, you know, Hill, Hill was finally committing the strikes, was touching D Ducote up, just marking her up with the jab in the first couple minutes. And then the right hand started falling into play. You know, the right hand started falling into play, making Ducote step back and just overthink. You know, Ducote's lack of movement really made it easy for Hill to just stay ahead and follow just follow up every time you know first round of Cody was just marked up from the bees you know what I mean um then going into the second Angel Hill just continued with this pressure made it hard for Cody to time her also Angel Hill started uh adding that tie clinch to her game she started adding that tie clinch to her game in this round landing some hard knees to the body and there were some vicious knees like you know Emily Dakota was getting cracked to the body with those knees like right right to the gut and you know she was you know she was eating these shots and I, I believe that's something that Jessica Panay probably went over with Angel Hill or even Angel Hill just saw Jessica Panay have that success because when Jessica Panay would uh, get that tie clinch um, she was landing them good knees on Jessica uh, on Emily Ducote the same fashion but somebody like um, 
Angela Hill was better Thai, with boy, better Muay Thai, she would have more success than she did. And then she'd go right back to her jab, right from the outside again. Um, she She's so used to coming forward, Emily Ducote, that is, that when she's fighting on the back foot, she couldn't really get off anything strong or she couldn't really time any any big punches to counter or even rock Angela Hill, you know. So she just kind of sat back in that mode of letting Angela Hill just go on a mission, you know. Angela Hill just on that mission, just beating Dakota up, body head. And then the last round, Dakota, I, I feel like this was her best best round, but she still lost. You know, she started going to the body with her left hook and, and jabbing to the body more. And um, Angela Hill still pumping that jab out in sequence. And as soon as she pumps the jab out in sequence, once again, Dakota has no answer. You know, so she's just literally accepting these strikes to the face. And I was like, come on, girl, you got to move your head a little bit, you know, take your head off the line, you know, maybe let a punch scrape by here or there. But, you know, at least slip your head and then come back with a, a good counter jab or something, you know. Dakota never even had a chance to, you know, get a takedown. Like, she, you know, she didn't even have a takedown plan in this fight. So she was just really giving Hill everything Angela Hill wanted in this fight, just an open target to, you know, tee off wherever she wanted, knees to the body, you know, flying knees, uh, right hands to the head. She was lucky Angela Hill didn't have no power because she would have been out of there, right? But uh, yeah, man, um, Angela Hill, she was fighting like she wanted the stoppage. Uh, it didn't come because she didn't really have that type of power and she's not sitting down on the punches, but she clearly won this fight and there was no way you could give Emily Ducote a round in this fight. And that's how you have to do it if you're Angela Hill. Like if you're not knocking anybody out, you have to fight with this type of storm. You have to come with this type of weather on these fighters because if you don't and you get and you continue to let somebody get into a groove, you're going you're gonna to be on the end of split decisions. And um, Angela Hill, she fought a very smart fight. And moving forward, I know styles change, but Angela Hill needs to be like this all the time, this type of overwhelming fighter like Caitlin Chikag, and very awkward, uh, high work rate, and just keep on working your opponent up and down until the end of the bell the very last bill, right? So yeah, man, Angela Hill gets it done. She calls out Carolina Kobukevich. How do y'all feel about that fight? Maybe I'll talk about it later. But um, she's just calling somebody out in her lane. I mean, I think if she does that fight, it's fine. But eventually you might want to go for the gusto one more time and try to fight a top five after, or maybe a top seven. I know she's already fought Waterson, maybe a rematch with her. You know, Tisha, she's already fought twice. Tisha's pregnant now. Maybe a rematch with Jan Janan at some point just to kind of uh, really test her skills. Maybe Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie Dern, that would be a good fight, you know, just to see where she really is. You know, get it one more time before, you know, it's over. You know, she's like 37, 38 now, right? So maybe after the Carolina Kovacavich fight, you know, go in there and, you know, test yourself one more time, you know, at the highest level that you can get to, right? So I think that would be possible for her because if she did beat Carolina, let's say she stops Carolina. Uh, I think the UFC would say, okay, well, she's graduated from this level again. Let's let's get her in there with somebody like Mackenzie Dern. You know, Mackenzie Dern's on the lower half there, right? So Mackenzie Dern would be a doable fight, I think. You know, so um, yeah, I like that match. Um, Emily Ducote, got to get the work in. Got to get the work in. I say that about every fighter. Got to get that work in on this lower level, the 115 division. Maybe um, her and Sam Hughes would be a good fight. I think, you know, Sam would actually might win that fight because, you know, Sam... Sam Hughes could, well, Sam Hughes could win that fight because Sam has other gears. You know, she does wrestle too. You know, Sam Hughes can wrestle and she has a ground game and she does have a long jab as well. And if your opponent's head is on the line like that, you know, Sam has some pretty good strike in it um, as well. You know, you can see her switch gears in, in, in her fights. You know, um, this fight here just showed a lot, like where Emily Ducote needs to, um, you know, be able to uh, move her head more and um, defense. That's, that's, the, that's the key for like a lot of these fighters, man. Defense, their, de their lack of defense is what cost them victories and the, the ability to move up, you know. But, yeah, that's another video as well, guys. Um, let me know what y'all think. Emily Ducote definitely got to fight down from here, uh, fight some of these lower-level fighters, um, and just build, and just build. Uh, Angela Hill is that test that if you can't pass her, you got to go back and work. You got to go back and work. But Angela Hill, I'd say i give her the Carolina fight, one more unranked fight, and then maybe step it up and fight somebody like Dern next. So, yeah, that's all I got, guys. Let me know what y'all think in the comment section. Combo Breaker 99, I'm out. Subscribe. Peace.